Good time of day. If you are in doubt and looking for the truth, this story is for you. Today, let's talk about the extraordinary structures that remain from a past civilizations. It's intriguing how these objects haven't received much attention from the official scientific community. There are numerous such objects scattered across the planet, but we will only explore a small portion. Let's begin by transporting ourselves to Cambodia, more precisely to the western beret of the ancient city of Angkor. This is a completely man-made reservoir, a remarkable rectangular structure measuring 8 kilometers by 2 kilometers. Just imagine, such precise dimensions, with straight angles maintained over such vast distances. It is the largest reservoir in modern Cambodia in terms of area, serving its purpose for over 900 years. The precision of the reservoir's boundaries and the grandeur of the construction are awe-inspiring. It is believed to have been built by the ancient Khmer civilization, although this claim remains debatable. Considering that this colossal structure would have been challenging to construct for ancient civilizations, it becomes apparent that this reservoir was not simply created by constructing a dam across a river. Instead, it was the result of the labor of the ancient people who manually excavated the ground and built the reservoir to a depth of 5 meters. This reveals the magnitude of their engineering skills. Try to imagine for a moment that this reservoir can be seen from satellite maps. On your screen, you can witness it from a bird's eye view. The perfectly straight angles and the ideal symmetry are breathtaking. It is doubtful that ordinary people of that time could create such grand structures and preserve them for such a long time. If we consider that this reservoir was constructed for water storage, one might question the necessity of orienting it precisely along the cardinal directions, particularly from west to east. The Eastern Beret, another reservoir, presumably existed as well. Currently, it appears dry, as depicted in the photographs. Its size is astounding, with a shoreline length of almost 18 kilometers, 10 kilometers longer than the Western Beret. It is an artificial lake that has partially dried up over time. However, it used to contain up to 50 million cubic meters of water. Now, as I understand it, this swampy area is used for agriculture. Inscriptions with unknown significance have been found at the four corners of the beret, but their purpose remains a mystery. We can speculate that these structures served rotational purposes or were simply reservoirs, but without any inscriptions indicating their specific function, we can only wonder. The labor required for constructing such massive reservoirs seems immense, and it's unlikely that they could have been accomplished by ancient humans with such precise and symmetrical angles of 90 degrees. In my opinion, these examples seem disconnected from our civilization. Perhaps there was another civilization or an alternative explanation. It's clear that humans, as we know them, did not create these grand structures in ancient times. Let's transfer with you to Peru near city of Cajamarca. Our eyes are greeted by an aqueduct Chumbe Mayo, the marvel of the mind. An aqueduct stands at an altitude of approximately 3 kilometers above sea level. We see the remains of an ancient structure that was clearly not made by hand. It is known that it was constructed even before the Inca Empire. Interestingly, the name Chumbe Mayo comes from the expression in the Quechua language, which translates to well-made water channel. Imagine how this aqueduct passes through the stone with smooth edges. It seems that water flowed through, but it's unknown how this civilization created it. The aqueduct is believed to have been built around 1500 AD, making it one of the oldest structures in South America. Just imagine, it stretches for about 10 kilometers. If the ancient waterway encountered rocks along the path, the unknown builders didn't seek an easy way and simply carved a tunnel straight through them. Take a look at these smooth walls, not a single rough edge made by stone axes or any other tools. How did they achieve such precision? The aqueduct truly amazes, and this place is particularly fascinating to me. Can you imagine the amount of effort it took to create such a turn? Why didn't they make a straight line? It's because the tool they used required them to work in this way. They couldn't make a straight line due to the interfering walls. The tool they used was large and bulky, which only fit in by cutting squares like this, you see. 
they had to turn everything to fit. If they hadn't done it this way, the tool wouldn't fit, but by making small cuts, they managed to create these little squares. The same goes for the patterns on this wall. It's truly astonishing and serves as evidence of the civilization that existed before us. Well, let's continue our journey and travel with you to Japan, near the city of Takasago, where the famous gigantic megalith Ishi no Hoden. It weighs approximately 600 tons and was created before our era. Ishi no Hoden is a unique semi-finished product, remaining in its original place during the manufacturing process, much like the unfinished obelisk of Aswan in Egypt. One of its vertical sides has the shape of a truncated prism, giving the impression that the object is lying on its side. At first glance, this position may seem strange, but it is actually quite intentional. The chosen rock at the edge of the rocky massif surrounding the mountainous chunk itself has a non-trivial geometric form. This specific orientation allows for guaranteed attainment of the desired shape from one side, while minimizing the excavation efforts. However, even with this simplification, a considerable amount of work was still required. According to rough estimates, about 400 cubic meters of rock were excavated, which is about 6,000 tons. A temple and an altar were constructed near this block, where sacrifices were offered. But the true purpose and the time of construction of this block remain unknown. It blends harmoniously into the local landscape, so to speak. Its 3D models showcase its complex geometric shape. How could such a sophisticated shape be crafted before our era? I, for one, cannot imagine achieving such perfect forms. It looks more like some kind of carved imprint, akin to a seal. Whose work could it be? Once again, it remains a mystery. We have plenty of puzzles on our planet. The next place of our virtual journey will be the Indian state of Karnataka. Here in the Shaumala River, when the water dries up, the Sahasralinga archaeological complex opens. I apologize for the inappropriate expression, but no one seems to have paid serious attention to these patterns and structures. Instead, they immediately assigned religious significance to this complex. As always, anything incomprehensible is attributed to religion. Consequently, hundreds of pilgrims flock here every year. Local residents acknowledge the ancient origins of this complex, speculating that it was likely constructed in the time of ancient gods. However, if we were to view these ancient gods as advanced technology, it would present a more fascinating picture. It provides further evidence of their existence. Furthermore, when we carefully examine the age of these artifacts, many questions arise. How were such intricate and precise figures created? The perfectly even excavations indicate that they were made using advanced technologies, surpassing even our own. The perfectly aligned circles at equal distances from each other, along with the shadow of the polished surfaces, all contribute to a magnificent impression. These places where such technologies are encountered, in quotation marks, are truly impressive remnants of ancient civilizations. From a distance, though, it may give the impression, I apologize for the expression, of a junkyard, as if construction debris was piled up together. There are numerous identical patterns, these constructions of varying sizes, but no one knows where they originated or investigates their purpose. It seems to me that this is similar to testing or trial work on equipment. I was doing a similar job when I had to master a machine for turning cliches into typographic work. Then, I had about 20 different products made of magnesium plate, which then went into the trash. This lack of investigation is not proof that there was no pre-civilization, a civilization that possessed highly advanced technologies capable of effortlessly carving such objects in stone. What I have shown in this video is just a small fraction of the artifacts that exist on our planet. Places like this, similar to this one, inexplicably fall into oblivion. Official science does not show much interest in them, nor does it study them. These circumstances lead to certain thoughts. I repeat, there are countless such places. Dear like-minded people, write in the comments what topics you would like me to touch on, archaeology, ancient architecture, geography and ancient maps, climate change, 
Signs of Past Disasters or Forgotten Technologies of the Past. Subscribe, like, click the bell so as not to miss new videos that will reveal the truth. Remember, the truth is often much more interesting and surprising than official fiction.